November 10, 1995, Ken Sarowiwa and eight other Ogoni activists were executed by the Nigerian government of late General Sani Abasha. On the 15th anniversary of their execution, Hope for Niger Delta campaign brought together a coalition of Dutch NGOs, including Amnesty International, Friends of the Earth, Milieu Defense, UNPO, and others to commemorate the extrajudicial killings of the Ogoni Nine activists. This event took place in The Hague, popularly referred to as the City of Peace. May your gentle soul rest in perfect peace as we will continue to remember you all for what you died for. We hope and pray that God will grant you all eternal rest. So when this opportunity came, I felt there was a need for us to recognize a man who had struggled non-violently and to send a message back to the youth in the Niger Delta that if you take a non-violent approach to resolving the issues and troubles of our region, even 15 years after you die, even those who don't know you, those who may not have met you, will honor you for what you've done. Today, I want to assure you all that Ken did not die in vain. But the only regret I personally have is that he has left a very big vacuum that we all have struggled in the Niger Delta to fill, and we are still struggling with that. Today, I think, is not just a commemoration, but today is also a celebration, a celebration of the fact that 15 years after this brutal execution, Ken Serviva is very much alive. He's alive with us here, for it is this way that great souls remain alive. It is when their legacy is taken up by others, when their legacy continues to live, and it is for us to prove that he did not die in vain and that his life was a life of example. And so I invite you all to, when we, uh, today, but also after today, to um, live by the example of some of these great people, such as Ken Sarabiba. And I thank you very much for, for having me. I want to go through the names of the other eight activists who died along with me. Ken Sarowiwa. After Ken Sarowiwa, we have Barry Bovera, Mr. Saturday Dobi, Mr. Nodu Ewo, Mr. Daniel Boko, Mr. Barinem Kyobel, Mr. John Bana, Mr. Paul Levura, and Mr. Felix. No other. With the lighting of the last set of candles, we are going to start with our honorary guest. Um, please come forward, Mr. Lionel Veer, our Human Rights Ambassador of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then, secondly, I would like to ask if Sharon Pesthauser, Member of Parliament, Socialist Party, wants to light a candle. Then I would like to ask, um, I haven't seen him yet, but I think he's here, Pastor Moses Udowu Ulabanji. Can you come forward to light the candle? If I could say it all, we would very soon have uh, a meeting with different parties uh, sitting at the table, uh, including Shell, uh, and also including uh, the Dutch ambassador in, from Nigeria, so th the man who works for the Dutch embassy in Nigeria, but also people like Mr. Sani Ofehe and also uh, someone like Michael Cowing, who uh, was working for the United Nations in Nigeria, to have a really a, a discussion in which we could finally find out what is going wrong because for the last few years, being a spokesman for economic affairs for the Socialist Party in Parliament, uh, I keep getting information from different NGOs, from people who have experienced what it is to live in the Niger Delta, 
from investigators, from, for example, Amnesty, from Friends of the Earth, and they have told me how very bad the situation in the Niger Delta now is. But I went to Shell, and I spoke to them about this, and they deny everything. They say we do not make, of course, so sometimes mistakes are made, but we do our best, and uh, there's nothing more we can do. It's all a problem that lies in uh, the corruption of uh, the government, and it's a problem uh, between different uh, parties in the uh, Nigerian, uh, between the different Nigerian communities. Well, I'm really pleased. There's been such a good turnout here. Uh, it shows that people are not just interested in uh, shopping or in TV or in sports, but people are truly here to really talk about human rights, to listen to people who are knowledgeable and to find out the facts. And I think that's really, really important for us and for us as a coalition that have worked for six months to see that people are, are so engaged. It's really fantastic. I really I really feel uh, sad that more and more people are being claimed because the Nigerian state and the multinational want to get oil with the blood of the people of the Niger Delta. Kaim Sarawuwa represents one of the historical pillars of this struggle to right the wrongs that have been done to the people of the Niger Delta and I'm always ready to associate with any event that involves his name and involves the people of Niger Delta. Fifteen years ago, a very tireless human rights campaigner, environmental rights campaigner, minority rights campaigner, Ken Sarawiwa, was hung by the military dictatorship that was in power in Nigeria on behalf of corporate interests. As the noose tightened around the necks of the Ogoni Nine, so we could say was the insatiable test of oil corporations being satisfied by the blood that flowed. Today we stand to remember a man who was a man of culture, a poet, a dramatist, a novelist. A man who believed in human dignity, who believed in equality, who believed that the environment is the life of the people. We all stand before history today. And we have to decide if we want to stand on the side of justice or we want to say, as far as we don't see the degradation, as far as we don't see the pollution, as far as we don't see the misery and the human blood flowing in the creeks of the Niger Delta, then it's okay to continue with business as usual. We stand before history today. I remember the words of Kesar Awiwa, who said, you may kill a dreamer, but you cannot kill the dream. It's been, it's been awesome. And I stand here on behalf of the Niger Delta people. And I want to assure you all that for coming here to solidarize with Ken Sarawiwa and what he stood for and the suffering people of Niger Delta, where I also come from, looking at your faces looking at what has happened and knowing that we're standing 3,276 miles away from where Ken Sarawua comes from. This is awesome. And before I proceed, I want you all to put your hands together and give yourself a big, big clap right now. Clap for yourself. It's been wonderful to have a sister who also is from Nigeria to entertain you all. Neka. 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 Give her a round of applause, everybody. Give her a round of applause. Give her a
And for the first time, and for the first time, I want to say, if I've ever regretted choosing the Netherlands as a country for me to come to, but tonight, I want to say I'm very proud to have chosen this country to have been. To.